the network is what it is today, it will stay today. You know, these folks feel more comfortable keeping the existing service they have today. This statute says that's exactly what they do. Now, we want to invest more into our new technology so that we can ensure that folks can use their pacemakers when they travel. And again, this bill is about allowing that to happen and then sending that to happen so that we can keep the existing services today that they want and also build out the new tomorrow instead of chaining us to the past to only what exists today. Again, nothing takes anything away from anyone today. That's simply not the case. I, 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 let's let's have a let's have a kind Tom, of. Tom, why a, isn't a it factual. looked at well, as an investment in Kentucky, no, no, no. an investment in the digital future? We, we heard the same thing when they got everything else deregulated in 2006. It'd be this tremendous new investment, lots of jobs. Um, the, let's get down to what the bill actually does. Okay. Immediately on, not when it takes effect. Uh, immediately on its uh, its effective date, which would be June or somewhere in June, if it were to pass. There would be no obligation going forward for any new residents to provide any service. Okay? There's the, the, the carrier of last resort obligation to provide basic phone service on a standalone basis is gone. For everyone who's a new customer, for existing customers, it's gone everywhere except in exchanges of less than 5,000. In the exchanges of less than 5,000, they specifically wrote in here that an affiliate can provide an alternative voice service. They could offer their wireless service as an alternative voice service, and as you've just heard, it doesn't have the same functionality. Mr. Turner's point early in the program, though, Tom, is of what benefit is it for them to get this law passed and not move forward with enhancement of our phone system. The point, Bill, is that, that the enhancement of the system is occurring, as Dan said. It's going to continue to occur. The question is, is there going to be a gap between the highly reliable service you have now and what's going to replace it? And the answer is right now, for folks in the Appalachian region in particular, yes, there will be a gap. They will suffer a potential loss of reliability and functionality because this bill allows them to swap out wireless service that their own, that, that they admit. And why would they do that? Because it's cheaper than maintaining the landline network. You know, Mr. Turner, Mr. Gerdeman, that seems to be the essence of the argument and the question uh, before the table uh, tonight is, will there be a gap, particularly in the rural areas of Kentucky, both west and in Appalachia? No, so the sir. answer again is? The answer is 2006. In 2006, Every service other than basic, we had the, the exact same fear could have been stated then. Well, they won't continue to provide those services. They'll just stop doing it and they'll strand people from it. That did not happen. And again, why didn't it happen? Because we are in the business of providing service. Why does Mr. Fitzgerald think we would seriously look at people who pay us our payments today and say we don't want them tomorrow? It's the only way this comes to fruition is he, if he seriously believes the day the governor signs this bill, we're going to send teams out with wire cutters and start cutting lines. No, no nobody's ever silly. said that. Nobody's ever said that, and it certainly is silly, which is why I would never say that, Ben. What, what I am saying is that under this bill, which, and you, you chose the words for a reason, okay? you have three options for these smaller exchanges. You can either provide alternative voice service, or you can petition the Public Service Commission to allow you to no longer be that carrier of last resort that has to provide service. Now, nobody said you're going to cut the wires, you know, under federal law, and I know under federal law you have to, have to maintain the network. It has to still be there. You have to petition the Public Service Commission to abandon that network, but you've asked the FCC to allow you to sunset it. Nobody has said that you're going to take away service, but this bill allows you to swap out less reliable, less functional service and there's no recourse. Literally, it's like Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call if it's less reliable?